Hi, Yongkin here. And in this video, I'll be showing you how I paint this bird and I'll explain my thought process along the way. I found this picture of this bird on Pinterest. So if you like to paint this bird as well, you can go to the link in the description below and it will take you to the Pinterest page. I start by preparing my colors on my palette. The brand that I'm using is called Holbein. I reactivate the colors on my palette and I prepare a big amount of it. Since I'll be painting big area on my first layer, I'll add a lot of water for it. I prepare a little more than I need it, just in case I will need more in the middle of painting it. The watercolor paper that I'm using is called Arches Paper. It is a very good brand for watercolor. Its original size was quite big and I cut it into around A5. After I finish sketching on my paper, I stick it on the cardboard with masking tape. So if I want my paper to be slightly tilted upwards, I can tilt the whole board. I'll be using two water containers. The first one is for me to wash my brush after I use it and I won't mind too much if the water gets dirty. The second container is to further clean my brush after it was washed in the first container. This will keep my second water container clean for a longer time and that way I won't need to go back and forth to get clean water. And for the brushes, I have a few variety of sizes. So, let's begin! I start with light blue on his face. I then quickly add this pastel purple on it. The colors will blend together naturally if there's enough water on it. So I have to make sure I paint quick before they dry. This blending technique is called sewing method. And also, I won't be following the colors of the image that I'm referring to. I'll modify it to my own liking. And then I transition it into a darker blue. Color changes is one of the most fun thing in watercolor. It makes your artwork look interesting and I use color changes throughout the painting. I want the orange color to be more vibrant compared to the blues and to do that, I make sure to make it opaque on my palette, meaning less water, so the mixture is more thick and is less transparent. So basically, the first layer is just sewing method or wet on wet. It's just me making color changes and taking care of where I want it to be light and where I want it to be dark. I'll use some plain water to spread out some colors to get the light colors that I want. I want my background to be dark, mostly on the left, so that my subject will stand out. I make sure to keep all my colors on my palette clean, so that my colors on my painting is vibrant and not dull. So I make sure that my brush is always washed every time I switch to another color, and I also have my second container to further clean my brush. I quickly change to a bigger brush to paint big areas. I tilted my board slightly so that the paint flows down and this creates the smooth downwards watermarks. My plan is to make some part of the bird blended together with the background and this creates a certain mood. The reason why I start painting the head first is because once I start to paint the background, the head of the bird will already be dried. And that way, the edges of the head will remain clear. And only the edges of the body will be blended with the background. 
For the cherries at the bottom, I want it to be vibrant and saturated, so I make it a little bit more opaque. And after that, I blur it out a little bit with some water. I make sure to leave some highlights on the top of the beak. In watercolor, you should go from light to dark, so it is important to leave your highlights light. Before I paint, I did some planning, so I plan which part I want it to be warm or cold. I also plan the values and also which part I want it to be blurry. I add some darker values to further darken the back. And I add few dots of reds on it. After the first layer is done, I leave it aside to let it dry completely before adding details. Now it's time for the details. And in this stage, I can take my sweet time. I'll do some layering for the details. I try to simplify it because I want this painting to be a little bit loose and not too detailed and hyper-realistic so I only make certain areas clear and detailed. I use a pointier brush to layer some small strokes. So I use some strokes to suggest out the fur and I just use light colors because I don't want it to be too contrast. For detailing part, it is important to know where you should stop and not overlayering the details. And for the body, I will only add certain dark strokes for the shadows. I want to keep the overall painting more loose. For the berries, I keep it loose, since I want the face to be the clearest part. I'm just fixing the edges of the cherries to make them round. And after a few adjustments, that is it. This is the final outcome. I hope you find this video insightful and if you did, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't and click the notification bell so that you will get notified whenever I upload a new video. For more of my artworks, you can follow me on my Instagram. My Instagram is Yongkin and I usually post my work in progress and also some practices that I do sometimes. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!